Hi, I'm Hayley Victoria and welcome back to my crime and policing channel. In today's session, we're doing something slightly different and that is because we are looking at actually writing assignments. So a lot of you have, have reached out to me through social media and, and on here as well, asking for advice about PCDA and IPL dip and how to go about, you know, the knowledge checks, the assessments and this kind of thing. And I'm your gal. I, I've, I've written some of the knowledge check stuff. I write the assignments and I mark them as well. So I know exactly what people are looking for and they're marking these things. So I think probably the first tip to give you, I mean, I probably shouldn't be doing this video to be fair, but you know, I want you guys to succeed. The first thing, so if you're doing an Ipple Dip course, when you are doing your knowledge checks, read the question. And honestly, right, the amount of people that skim it and miss the obvious things is, oh God, honestly, you just think, ah, oh, I should just read it more. Because in the question, Ignore all the bump about like, you know, Gerald was walking down the street, Gerald did this, this and this. What you're looking for is the points to prove. So if you can, with like a pencil or something, underline all the points to prove that you think are being labelled in that um, question. And all you've got to do is try and think if it satisfies that offence or not. So it, it's really important to remember, whatever knowledge check you get throughout your journey, there are a couple throughout your journey in a nipple dip. Um, and in other things too, is that they will only cover what you've covered in class. So the knowledge checks are related to what you've covered. But then you get one at the end which covers everything. Um, so you'll be looking at the points to prove that you've already just covered. And also things like your caution. So it's just remembering those little rhythms. So in terms of things like the Theft Act, the points are proved there. So dishonestly appropriate property belonging to another with the intention to permanently deprive of it. Now the question might be something like, Johnny borrowed your Wellington boots and brought them back. That's not theft. If, do you know what I mean? It'll ask you to identify those points of proof. So your knowledge checks, honestly, just read the question and, and underline the points to prove. And that is that simple. Um, okay, so in terms of the PCDA and other academic writings, there are some things that people get slightly wrong, which really cost you points. And it just, it's such a simple fix, right? And you know, like I said, I probably shouldn't be telling you this, but there are ways that you can make your assignments easier and clearer and quicker for you to do for yourself. So it's not about working harder, it's about working smarter. So a little bit like with evidence-based policing, right? So you're gonna use all the best evidence you can to inform your assignment. If you've got all these hints and tips and a little cheat sheet from me, hopefully it's gonna save you time because I know you've not got an abundance of that at your mercy as you are operational police officers. What we are gonna look at then is how to relate this assignment to, to what you're doing. So as I've just mentioned, points to prove. So you know that you've got to have these points to prove for this crime to hold, haven't you, for this, this case you've got. So um, you need your points to prove to, to, to CPS to take it to court, whether to charge somebody. You need to have those points to prove, otherwise it's not a crime. Similarly, with your assignments, your academic work, you've got assessment criteria. Now think of those as your points to prove. So say you've got an assessment and one of them is define vulnerability. The first assessment criteria in there, define vulnerability. Do it, because that's one of your points to prove. You might have three or four assessment criteria, maybe even a couple more if it's a big one. And just make sure you satisfy each of those points to prove you answer each of those questions. Um, and that in itself will give you a very good chance of succeeding in those assignments. Because a lot of things that people miss out on is they don't look at the criteria. You kind of get stuck in that story. So, you know, when you're trying to make sense and sequence things, you might go off on a bit of a tangent and sometimes you're detracting away from what the assignment's actually asking you to do. So assessment criteria, like I said, think of it as points to prove and that should help you. Because once you've got all them, ah, brilliant. But before you get to the body and the questions, the most important thing for you to start your assignment with is your introduction. That, honestly, if you've got a good introduction, that sets the precedent for the rest of your work. In your introduction, you want to be telling us, the people who are marking it, what you're doing. It's not hard. And address those assessment criteria in there. So in this assignment, I will be writing an essay based on vulnerability. I will be defining the vulnerability um, blah, 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 blah. I'll be looking at this, this and this. So you're you're ticking off those assessment criteria and it's not only is it telling us that you're satisfying the brief, it's giving you a list of things that you need to do. 
So you're, that's your introduction. Make sure if you use any sources, so if you're talking about Gibbs Reflection Cycle or you're bringing in the College of Policing or something, they add a citation as well because that is just top marks. Make sure you use your citations. That is a good introduction. So once you've started with your introduction, and I know one of my colleagues, um, he likes to write his introductions at the end to make sure it really does um, synchronise with his conclusion. But anyway, so you've got your introduction, then your main body is where you're addressing those points to prove. Make sure you address the points to prove. So those assessment criteria. If it's asking you to define vulnerability, define vulnerability, but make sure you are supporting that with a reference. And the reference has to be something to do, like, if you can, to do with, like, policing. So vulnerability in, in the world of, you know, the criminal justice system. Um, not some bizarre thing from medical journal in, I don't know, Peru or something. It's got to be something, you know, suitable. So make sure you use a reference for anything like that. If you're telling us some facts that you have got from somewhere, you need to tell us where it's from. Because it's okay putting this stuff in your assignment. So, yeah when people are vulnerable it makes them this this and this so what well so there are 11 million people in blah 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 so you get your facts in and then think of says who so this was said by this journal on this date it's honestly it's just backing up your stuff and you you should be great at gathering evidence this is what you're doing here what we don't want to see either so in terms of your academic writing is emotive language so it might very well have been a, a terrible atrocity for mankind, but you've got to write in an, an objective and formal manner. And as much as you, you may be well-versed in things, you might be very, very clever saying, well, I think it's a bit of a it's not going to get you any good marks. What you need to be doing is when you're looking at evaluative things, you're looking at positives, negatives, and then you draw a conclusion in the middle. So positive. So I think this is good because of, this, 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 and this, reference. However, it might be a little bit negative because this, this, and this, reference. Overall, I think this, this, and this because of this, reference, if you can. That in itself is a bob on. So let's just go through those again. So when you're looking at your assessment brief, when you first get it, don't panic. It's a lot of words, some of them are quite big and, you know, convoluted because that's how academics write. But just skim through that. Look at the points to prove, which is your assessment criteria. Make sure you start with a good introduction. Your points to prove, so your criteria fit the main body. And then you've got a conclusion at the end, which will tie everything up. And that'll kind of show what you've done throughout the body, why you've done it, and how it links to the criteria in your introduction. It's like a lovely little end of the story. So at the end of the loop. So this is what I'm going to do. This is all the stuff that I have done. It's that simple, really. Um, when it comes to your references, a lot of people hear references and they're going into a bit of a panic. However, I've got another sneaky little tip for you. And this is how I make it make sense to me. So when people say stuff to me like Harvard, APA 7 and all that kind of stuff, I'm like, what? It does not compute, right? But when you give me some actual direct facts, it's much easier. So when you're writing a reference APA 7 and style Lee, you start off with who. So who wrote it? With your surname first. Um, so I'll give you a surname then, I don't mind. Seward H, that's me. When, so the year it was written, um, what it's called, so the name of the thing. So it's who, when, what, and the what is in italics. And then where did you get it from is the final one. There's four steps to it. It's not that hard. So who, me, when, what it's called, where you found it. Now, it's really important as well, I'm, I will do a proper video all about referencing, um, that you put the dates on when you get things, especially if you're using websites, because things get updated all the time. If you put a quote in there that you've got from this website, right, and I don't pick it up until however oh, many weeks later, I think, don't say that anymore, you've got to make sure you put the date on when you got it. Um, but like I said, I'll do a whole different video on referencing. I hope this kind of cheat sheet to do in your assignments helps, because people losing big marks just for missing criteria, not doing an introduction and not doing a conclusion. Make sure you cite, so that means that you are putting in the text where you've referenced things. And at the end, have a full reference list in alphabetical order using that um, who, when, what, and where that I've just mentioned. But like I said, I'll do a whole referencing video, but you can't wait for that. Um, in the meantime, um, I hope that helps. Let me know if it does. 
let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to cover because I'm more than happy to help always. In the meantime, stay safe, look after each other and please don't commit any crime.